Now, last week, the government announced that disposable vapes are set to be banned to tackle the increase in young people taking up the habit. Measures will also be introduced to prevent marketing aimed at children and underage sales. Well, now, a BBC Northwest investigation has uncovered evidence that vapes are being used to groom children into sexual or criminal exploitation. Hayley Hassel has this exclusive report. It was in May last year. I met a boy on TikTok. He said he'd buy me some vapes, and it's just started from there. Chloe is 14 and she lives in Manchester. Last year, she met a boy on social media. But when Chloe went to meet this boy, he was actually a man in his late 20s. What started out for Chloe as free vapes after school soon turned into other gifts, and those gifts came with a price. These are her words, but the girl you are seeing is an actor. After a few months, we went to his flat rather than the park, as it was getting cold. He told me he loved me, and if I loved him, he needed some things. The man that Chloe was now in a relationship with began to demand sexual favours, and when she said she didn't consent, he threatened her, saying he would send footage he had of her to her friends and family. The dangerous thing about vapes is that they're an easy first step. Jane Kenyon is the founder of Charity Girls Out Loud. It's very easy for these groomers to stand outside newsagents after school and hand out other vapes and then offering them. So we see that. Um, and we also see girls with vapes all the time that we kind of know they haven't bought them. And they'll tell us that the older boys buy them. Yeah? But they don't get that they're engaging in a relationship there. And this obviously starts as someone receiving a vape, but what can it lead to? It can lead to all sorts of criminal activities. So, you know, they might recruit them into county lines, they might recruit them into criminal gangs, and they might sexually exploit them. And that can happen very quickly. Rachel D'Souza is the Children's Commissioner for England, and she says she's making vapes her top priority. I talk to tens of thousands of children, visit them all around the country, um, and when I ask them what some of their biggest concerns are, vaping is always top of the list. Even worse than that, adults trying to tempt them with vapes um, and using them as a kind of currency to get near children. It is insidious and it's affecting our children's lives. Chloe was eventually helped by the Girls Out Loud charity, who got her involved with their youth project. Her situation was reported to the safeguarding officer at school and to the police. But she says she's one of the lucky ones. She still sees young people being offered vapes by older men very regularly. And although the government plans to ban the use of disposable vapes, there are still concerns that children are acquiring them through unsafe means. Hayley Hassel, North Western Night. Now, Brianna Jai's mum says that she doesn't want to comment on the Prime Minister's recent remarks about the transgender debate. Esther Jai was, has issued a statement saying that she wants to focus on bringing about positive change. Today, Rishi Sunak again a few, refused to say sorry for a joke he made about the Labour leader Sir Keir Starmer's views on transgender issues. Brianna's dad said the PM should apologise, something again he declined to do. If you look at what I said, I was very clear talking about Keir Starmer's proven track record of U-turns on major policies because he doesn't have a plan, a point only proven by today's reports that the Labour Party and Keir Starmer are apparently planning to reverse on their signature economic green spending policy. That just demonstrates the point I was making. A coroner has ruled that a man who died in a house explosion in Lancashire